are you? Who are you? How many people will be able to answer this question? How many can answer confidently? Our identity by itself is already not an easy thing to define or consider, but in addition to that, there are many factors that lead us to get confused with our identity or make us not proud to be ourselves. I believe you have heard the song Gangnam Style. But do you know what Gangnam is? It's the richest, most developed town in Seoul. But look at these pictures. As you can notice, the women on the picture all look the same. This is a satirical drawing about a Korean women having too much plastic surgeries in an attempt to look white, have big eyes, and small oval faces. Even some of the students of my age in South Korea have plastic surgeries. And to be honest, I previously spent days thinking about what plastic surgeries I should have. At that time, I didn't know what was wrong about that. It was only after I came to Germany that I noticed how abnormal such a thing was. This is the reality of our perception of identity these days. Wanting to become prettier is understandable, but since when is looking like another race the standard of beauty? And it's not the case only in South Korea. There are many people who get whitenings in attempt to have a lighter skin color or even just to look white. I remember how I was shocked when I first saw white people tanning themselves out in the sunlight and even pay to get tans. On the other hand, the Asians try to block out the sunlight with the special umbrellas they have and find it ugly when someone is tanned. Isn't it ironic how we all desire for what we don't have, whilst others will desperately want what we have? And it's not only about beauty. There are many people who are not satisfied with themselves. They want to be someone they are not. So why are we not satisfied with ourselves? What and who affects us to be insecure? Our surroundings, what we see and learn, and from those, media especially, affect us a lot. The media often portrays people who are different from us as beautiful. So for example, for whites, people who are tanned, and for Asians, people who are white and have big eyes. And we aim to become like that. Moreover, the media also features people getting mocked when they don't fit the popular definition of beautiful. So we, as the audience, try not to get involved in that kind of situation. And people who don't fit the popular definition of beautiful become insecure and daunted. Children are also greatly affected by their parents and their siblings. Like sponges, they pretty much absorb everything they're told especially when they reach the age of thinking about themselves, their surroundings, and the world. One example would be my little sister. She's pretty and cute, but her nose is flat, something that we Koreans would call ugly. So whenever people saw her, saw her they would be like, oh, you're really pretty except for your nose, or it would be perfect if your nose was higher. So as that kept going on, my sister became really stressed about her nose and tried to make her nose higher habitually since the age of seven. We should all have the courage to outstand and point out what is wrong. We shouldn't just accept the reality or the media as it is now, but try to challenge it and don't accept every single thing it portrays. We shouldn't accept what media has strictly defined as beautiful but challenge it by accepting different forms of beauty. We don't have any reason to feel intimidated, but we should be confident about ourselves. Right now in our school, there's a project called Random Acts of Kindness. It's a block where teachers or students can compliment on others' virtues that no one really noticed before, or comment on good things what others did without getting acknowledged. The complimenter is kept secret, and also, the screenshot of that blog is shown in our school so that everyone can see who is complimented and why. I saw my name written up there. It was actually really surprising to see my name up there. And when I saw what the complimenter has written about me, I really, really felt happier 
and became proud of that part of myself I never really noticed before. See, you can already notice how one single compliment can change what I think of myself. Think about what you could do by complimenting others. You could change one person's whole life. Go ahead and start with this change first. Compliment on others' virtues and not just on their appearances. Tell them what you, what you like about them and how they should stay that way. Compliment on what others don't, don't like about them. And at first they might deny it, but keep complimenting. And eventually they won't feel any repulsion and at the end, they will become much more confident and won't try to hide, hide their so-called defect. Coming back to the story of my sister, I kept telling her that her nose is pretty. At first, she thought I was joking. However, I kept complimenting her. And after a few weeks, she said thank you and didn't seem to bother about her nose that much anymore. Compliment especially children, as they are vulnerable, but at the same time also easy to affect positively. Don't let them get hurt or only care about their appearances from the young age. Remind people that they are just as beautiful as anyone they can see on the TV. Small eyes, freckles, snub nose, high cheekbones, they are all beautiful. And most of all, each and every one of us should remember, should remember this. We are more than we think. Thank you. <laughs>